if you don't have the right ethics, you probably don't have anything to look for in internal audit. Internal audit has to be based on one facts and data. Today, you don't need to be an expert. You have the data that supports you. Hello and welcome to this week's episode on the world of audit. Today we're joined by Lech Olzak, who's the Internal Audit Director at Foratia for the Americas region. Lech has over 12 years of experience in the audit profession, starting at PwC in Poland before moving to Foratia in Germany and then relocating internally to America. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So to begin, um, uh, I like asking all audit directors this question. Um, what attracted you to audit in the first place? So I think, you know, my, as my first audit experience was with PwC, what attracted me was really the external audit function, where you have this wide view over the business, where in uh, one year you're able to go through different companies, uh, where you see things, how are done differently, right, company to company. Uh, and this gives you this nice start to understand where you want to go with your career in the future, but also which type of company, which type of business you want to, you want to join. That's, I think, the, one of the big advantages that, um, that an external audit company gives you. On top of that, of course, there is, you know, progression and there is um, um, advancement in your position more or less year to year or in two years, which I think every, you know, young professional finishing good studies is expecting. Right? So do you, do you think that with, with so many different avenues a uh, professional can take to to become an audit professional. Do you feel that having that external audit experience in the beginning is, is probably the best platform for an auditor to begin their career? So truly saying, I've had an um, experience with um, people that are in internal audit coming both from external audit and coming from business. And um, I think both ways are just different. Uh, I wouldn't say that the external audit way is the best, but I, for me, I think it worked well. Uh, I think it gave me the, um, a lot of knowledge and uh, also, you know, in audit methodology. And uh, in, that's something where uh, the external audit companies are really good at, also project management, right? So this is, this, these two things is where they really uh, master. Um, and for um, internal audits, it's more depending company to company. Not every company is that advanced. So you're able to really bring that knowledge to your uh, in new company and uh, being able to give this value added. Okay. With the, the transition that can, that can happen from external audit and, and someone moving into an internal audit department, and I'm asking this for, for the people watching that are maybe in external audit and considering sure. an internal move, what, what are, what does, what's the first year like in terms of that transition? Um, and what experience are they going to gain that they can't gain as an, as an external auditor? So I think the first year is a very challenging one. And uh, it's something where you really start to understand what internal audit function is about. Uh, being in an external audit, you have a view of internal audit function, but it's probably not exact view that, you, that, it, that the reality is at the end. So... Um, in this first year, you're able to see if you really like it, if it's something for you, and you get to really know it. Um, it's also challenging because you're seen as a professional, but your value added is limited. As I said before, it's mostly limited to this audit methodology, uh, to project management, not as much to understanding the business of a particular company, because you have this wide view, but you're not into details as much as you need to be in internal audit. So really for somebody to get the most out of an internal audit function, they really do need to spend a, a, a few years in the department so they can have that, that first year's learning curve and then add value. Is that, would that yes, be fair to say? Yes, I would say, I would say that it of course depends very much on the company, 
But um, a lot of companies advertise two years in internal audit and then rotation. I think it's too short. I think um, with two years, you are able to rotate, but to lower level functions. If you really want to advance in the company, if you want to get a recognition of the top and middle management, you need to stay in internal audit a little bit longer, probably four to five years. Okay. Do you think, talking about rotation, do you think that rotation should be mandatory in internal audit departments? I think it does. I think it does for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, um, that's the expectation of your employees. Mm -hmm. So at the end, if you want to keep the good people, you need to enable that. Yeah. Um, also from the company side, I think having internal audit uh, that is extremely knowledgeable about your how your company operates, about all different functions, different processes, and not being able to utilize it on the business side mm -hmm. is just a waste. Okay, uh, I think from from my perspective, I've seen a reduction in career auditors in the numbers of career auditors, um, and an increase in in rotation. Um, and it's certainly, I mean, how much of it is true that the perception is if you were to spend longer than you really need to in, in, in all that once your learning curve kind of starts to, to flatten? I mean, with the development of audit and it being so fluid, I'm wondering how much truth is there to that where, where auditors can stop learning by staying in the department, yet departments seem to be developing so, so quickly. So I think I think it's you know it depends from department to department from company to company. Um, if the company gives you possibilities to advance inside internal audit, uh, it's not like you are staying for five years on one position, right? You can become first a junior auditor or an auditor, then you become a senior, then maybe you become manager, director, and maybe even a CAE. Mm -hmm. So as you progress, you get different responsibilities, and that's where you're learning curve stops, starts still climbing, right, instead of going down. I think that's the very important thing. Um, if, of course, if you are to join internal audit function and just become an auditor and there is no progression inside of it, then four years is, is too much. That's, that, that will not work for anyone. Um, for everyone, the learning curve, you know, is different. I think it very much depends on, on your boss who has to lead you who has to give you opportunities to develop. Yeah. Um, looking at myself, you know, as I progressed in internal audit, I didn't just join one. You know, I, I have now my third function in internal audit. Um, I was really, I'm still on the curve going up. And as you know, of course, uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to develop further, but I'm not really at the point where I'm looking like, oh, I need to change, right? I'm not in a hurry because I still see that I have a huge progress. Um, the longer you stay, the longer you have exposure to top and high management, the higher your soft and leadership skills also get. So that's something that is more important on the higher positions rather than just analytical skills that you get at the beginning. Sure. But what do you think are the key, the key elements that, that make up a good auditor? The key behaviors or, or attitudes, personalities that that you would put together to say that, you know, those behaviors and everything else would produce a good audit, audit professional? Um, for sure, the audit professional has to be um, respectful to everyone. Generally, the ethics. I think the ethics is the key. Uh, if you don't have the right ethics, you probably don't have anything to look for in internal audit. Um, so the respect, um, the accountability, um, for no matter what you do or who you speak to, uh, if it's someone you know from the shop floor of a manufacturing place or if it's top management. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also one of the amazing things that internal gives you this possibility to speak with everyone through the hierarchy of the company. Yeah. Sure. Do you, do you think that in different industries or, or potentially in, in different environments, it's, I mean, I know from a technical perspective, of course, you, you could be looking for different backgrounds and experience. But do you think that there's a call in different areas um, or different businesses with all the functions that would require um, a, one type of auditor from, from a behavioral standpoint, 
and an approach standpoint to you know, another company where it might be very, very different? Or is there a standard where you would say to conduct audit, it has to be like this? No, I think I think there are there are differences. For sure, some companies see audit, and I'm not saying it's the best way to see audit, but see audit more as an internal police function. Uh, in this role, you probably need to be a little bit stronger person in terms of discussions, uh, in terms of um, difficult topics, uh, being able to handle uh, also you know special missions, fraud missions, and so on. Um, in some other companies, you know, internal audit is limited to SOX audits, uh, where really these qualities don't matter that much. It's more about your analytical skills and uh, being systematic in your work and your approach. So you, you mentioned the the perception of audit and, and can sometimes be of you know internal police officers or the business would view audit as a hurdle um, and a, a troubling week or two weeks for them. Uh, how, how, in your opinion, can audit departments ensure that they're engaged with the business and that they, they bring the business on board to work more as a partner than, than the, a hurdle? That's, I think, the main role of the CAE and the audit management, so the directors, to uh, be able to show the function as a business partner and as enabler, as leading change and not being a break. Um, I think this is the, um, of course, at the end, it depends also on the management, right? The management has to be ready for that. Uh, they have to have the right understanding. It's very helpful, and it happens very often when someone from the top management comes from the internal audit background. Then they have a better understanding of the function and what the function can really do. Because um, what, how I see internal audit is that at the end, there is no one else in the company that has this amazing view over all the functions, all the business groups, all the divisions that has um, facts and data coming from all the hierarchy, as I mentioned, um, and probably visited more locations and not just to look at them, but to really go into depth on their processes than anyone else in the company. There is, I, I don't know if there is anything better than can be said about advisor, right? Uh, is the depth knowledge of, of the topics they speak of. Internal audit has to be based on facts and data. If internal audit starts to go into politics saying opinions, that will probably not work because then it's you versus the top management. Yeah, You have to be able to show to the top management that you are here to help them, not to replace them. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting answer. It's the first, it's the first of, of the interviews that we've been doing. Um, we've heard some great things like audit should be seen before the audit, um, but certainly looking at it from that perspective is, is, is a new one. Um, one of the things that you m mentioned on, on SOX audits is you know, being more analytical. Um, data analytics has obviously made huge differences to internal audit and uh, you know, I, I would ask you what's changed from your first day in, in, in audit, but I would imagine the answer is going to be, well, data analytics allows you to do a lot more a lot quicker. Is there anything else that's, that apart from data analytics, that's really added value to the audit function over the last, let's say, five or ten years that we can see progressing forward and, and continuing to develop to allow audit to have value? I think, I think from the tools point of view, data analytics is one very powerful tool because again it gives you to your hand very big amount of facts and data and uh, you know data analytics is um, um, I would say something that um, is it's not about the tool you use for data analytics the data analytics is a tool in itself and you can do it even in Excel you know to some extent the point is more about the concept of having this huge amount vast amounts of data that uh, give you just a power in discussions because you have the knowledge you can prove what you uh, what you're saying right instead of just being in an opinion you can really uh, support it um, from the other things um, I think from from what changed the internal of the function is also all the communication um, today having you know Skype conferences uh, it's not only to do audits on the distance um, I would say most of the companies are still very traditional where you travel for the audits. But 
all the communication that goes around the audit before and after. That's something that you can do uh, easier. The same, you know, audit is a, a worldwide function where you have your colleagues working in other places in the world. And the way to communicate today with Skype, with video, it just enables you to be much more effective in your sure. work. Do, do you think data analytics will, the development and progression of AI and everything else involved, do you think that will bring a situation where travel is, at the very least, re the requirements reduced? And the, with the use of technology, that the audit will not actually need to be in the field nearly as much as, as they used to be? I think it very much depends on the type of the industry you're in. Uh, if you're in the banking industry or anything connected more with services, human-related services, you know, temporary worker agencies, etc., um, where things are mainly virtual, where it's all about data, then the travel will be for sure less and less, and to some extent maybe will stop. Um, if you're in a manufacturing world, uh, I think it will not come very quickly. At the end, there are some things that you just need to physically see with your own eyes. Sure. Um, a lot of discussions um, around data analytics have raised some, some questions and, and some different opinions on the value of a CPA or any other you know, chartered accountancy. Um, and some people are saying that um, the development of analytics is going to devalue the need to be a CPA or, or chartered accountant, to be an auditor. Um, and the technical skills and, and an understanding of data analytics will be will almost overwrite that. Do you think that the, the progression of analytics is going to reduce the need to be a CPA? No, I think totally the opposite. I think that, that data analytics gives you, again, this tool in your hand to be more valuable for the company. Um, as a low level auditor, you need to still set up those data analytics, you need to run those, and then you need to get conclusions out of it. Um, as far you know, as we have nice view over the AI, you know, and uh, I know more today is speaking about you know autonomous cars and everything is, you know, you have the robots cleaning your house and so on. It's all about uh, setting up programs and being able to get conclusions. And this is something that AI today still is not able to do, at least in a way that human might can. Um, as for the higher level of uh, auditors, this is this big difference between you and your business partners. That thanks to data analytics today, you have a possibility to show them to things that support what you're saying. Versus in the past, the, the function was very much about opinions. Yeah? Uh, a lot of people in the function were experts in the fields. And only the top management would speak with a person that was perceived an expert. Today, you don't need to be an expert. You have the data that supports you. Do you think that with the progression of, of, of that and the development, do you think that there is a call for, C, the, for the requirements to become a CPA, um, that there needs to be a, a review of, of the requirements? and almost have more technical aspects put into that so that the, the certifications and the chartered accountancies almost keep up with the progression of the actual professions within accounting and finance? Um, I think the CPA function is very important, uh, but it's still very limited to the finance function. The big difference in internal audit is you are becoming a very operational person, right? You see really the operational world. You are getting away from the finance. Your, your uh, contact with finance is more limited to uh, estimating the levels of risk, right? Uh, you're really not looking at the balance sheets or P&Ls in a way the chartered accountant looks at. Um, so this gives you a totally different view. However, the knowledge of the CPA is great because at the end, even when you go to a company to work for, the first thing you look for is their financial statements that are published. That's your first contact with the company and that's what all the investors do. So you know what the investors expect and how changes in the business will affect the financials of the company. Because sometimes a good decision has a short-term effect that is maybe a negative for the investors, right? Therefore, therefore, 
Uh, with this understanding, you get advantage. All right. Do you think that ag agile auditing and having almost um, a constant review and, and, and real-time review of how audit is spending its time and, 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 and how are we adding value to the business? I mean, I've heard stories of from all, some audit professionals recently where they're, they'll be in the field and something, you know, they'll be reviewing something that had quite a high importance level. Um, they were expecting maybe four days, three or four days work. And when they get there, they quite quickly realize, actually, no, this, this isn't what we thought in, in a good way. Um, and they will instantly change one of their objectives or the overall objective of the audit and focus on something else. Do you think that that, that agile approach to auditing is, is something that, that companies should start embracing and moving closer towards? I think it's something you have to do. If, if, if it doesn't happen, it's a question then, do you choose your fields of audit properly? Because if you're really focusing on things that matter, then it's worth spending this more time if you see there is a need, right? So at the end, I would say, if you don't have these opportunities, it should be like a red light for you saying, mm, is my audit function really bringing value, right? If I go into the topic and I don't really see a need of going any more in depth or spending more time on it. Yeah, so perseverance, I guess, is to unravel the business and understand it truly yeah. is, is very important. Um, it certainly still exists where the traditional auditing is still a part of some departments and, and you know they're, they're almost playing catch up to that to that agile approach um, and I guess it goes back to the mindset that you're talking about of, of an auditor and being able to deal with that and, yeah. and, and be able to I think the mindset has to change from accountant and ticking the boxes to this really business advisor and by business advisor, it doesn't mean you lose your independence. Yeah. You're still being independent. You're still assessing risks, looking for opportunities uh, and challenges for that stand in front of the company. Uh, but you're not doing it just for the way of doing it. You're doing it to bring the value to the company. Um, you know, I was reading an article, I think it was in the uh, IIA um, uh, magazine, not the or, uh, quarterly, it's I think published that was uh, standing, it's not about you, meaning the auditor, it's about your company, right? And I think it's, it's, uh, it's very true. Uh, if it's about you, when you do the job, you will fail. If you treat it that you're doing it for the company, you will succeed. Are, are there areas of the business where audit can typically, and more often, add, val add more value than other areas of the business? Or is the potential an even playing field. I think I think um, audit can add value in every area. The the first area where where audit can add value to everyone is to um, be a coach, a teacher of what really risk is, how to deal with risks. Uh, you know, still a lot of managers see risk as uh, their own failure. So they don't want to look on the risks in their business because if they see risks, it means that they failed as a manager, which is not the case. Seeing risk and being able to react to it in a proper way makes you a better manager. But this is something that still needs to be uh, teached to the, to the professionals. Yeah, self-correcting self is uh, something that's hard for, for almost everybody. Yeah. Um, and then having that humility to, to understand, well, I'm actually only failing if I don't address this. Yeah. Hi there, me again. I just wanted to take one moment to talk to you about My Job Search, which is a self-help ebook I've created to help you manage your own recruitment process from the very beginning of creating your CV and understanding what you want out of your career, through the middle section of interview preparation and tips, right to the very end of negotiating salaries and potentially dealing with counter offers from your current employers. Now, this is going to be available on Amazon. The link's going to be in the description below. And if you don't have a Kindle, don't worry, you just need to download the app. Until next time, bye bye.